I would say overconfident. I would also say setting expectations too high. On one hand, I actually regard the president's comments today as slightly reassuring. A lot of us who watch the Korean Peninsula closely worried about a scenario where President Trump shows up to a meeting with Kim Jong-un on June 12th and walks away shocked that Kim wasn't there to turn over his nuclear weapons, which, of course, has been the case all along. Yeah, that's the key, isn't it? We keep going back to this, this definition of denuclearization, meaning one thing to Trump and quite another um, to North Korea. Where are we on that? Is Kim Jong-un likely to completely denuclearize before any talks take place? So the phrase completely denuclearize, I think we can go over the hermeneutics there and uh, discuss exactly what that means. But I would say, referring to the president's remarks that um, Kim Jong-un's about face has something to do with Xi Jinping, I actually think that's totally um, off, the, off the mark. I think uh, North Korea's change in faith was um, more due to comments made by U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton, who hinted at a Libya model of denuclearization for North Korea, where North Korea would have to hand over its nuclear weapons first before receiving any kind of economic sanctions relief. I think those remarks really upset North Korea. And in fact, their vice foreign minister did put out a statement to that effect. And that has really been the cause, along with the U.S.-South Korea aerial military exercises involving B-52 strategic bombers. Those two events together are what led North Korea to think that this administration is not serious about diplomacy um, on its terms. So you think you're blaming now the Trump administration for its own rhetoric um, being its undoing there and, and dismiss so much the, rule, the role of China. What about the, uh, the role of South Korea here? So with South Korea, I think there's two or three different processes that we should be cognizant of. So one is the inter-Korean peace process. And a lot of that, in fact, if we go back to April 27th and we think about the inter-Korean declaration, most of that declaration had to do with inter-Korean issues and very little, only one section talked about denuclearization of the Korean peninsula. Um, so that's one. And then two, uh, there is the U.S.-South Korea alliance, which I think does have the potential to suffer from President Trump feeling as if he was misled by President Moon, which I don't think was the case. I think President Moon has been trying to play a hand that he was dealt uh, pretty well um, since North Korea decided to engage in diplomacy uh, beginning in February. And finally, uh, President Moon is invested in, in seeing this U.S.-North Korea summit become a success and allow the inter-Korean process itself to sustain momentum as well. If this summit blows up, there is a possibility that both the U.S.-South Korea alliance and the inter-Korean peace process go with it.